Hello, my name is Amy Sturkey. I am a pediatric physical therapist and I'm talking today about torticollis. So torticollis is caused by most commonly a tightness in the sternocleidomastoid. So I'm gonna flare mine right here. That's this muscle right here. It runs from behind your ear to the inside edge of the uh, collarbone and the sternum um, right here. So it runs right there. And when it contracts, it laterally rotates and laterally flexes and rotates the head to the opposite direction. So what you get are little, little babies that have their head turned off to one side. It is pretty common. It is, uh, occurs in about one in every 250 births. It is the third most common orthopedic deformity in children right behind hip dysplasia and club, club foot. It is more common on the right side where they tilt, uh, and torticollis is described according to the side you tilt your head to. So it's either, if you want to think about it, the side that they tilt their head to or which side of their face is facing out. But it's right-sided torticollis. They have their head turned toward their left. So it's just the opposite of true if it's left-sided torticollis. That means their head is tilted to the left but rotated to the right. So the head is tilted left, their left, and the left side of their face is out to the front. It is more common in boys than girls with a ratio of about three to two. And it is more common in first pregnancies or in pregnancies for one reason or another, there's a decrease in uterine space. It's also more common with bigger babies because they have less room in there and so they end up getting all tight up in that spot. It's also more common when parents tell, uh, will often say that their baby did not move, they settled in and were still in one position for a longer period of time. It is very common, 20% of the time, if a baby has torticollis, that they also have hip dysplasia. So it's important to check for whether the hip is subluxing or dislocating um, in these babies if you have a child who also has torticollis. Okay, so what are the warning signs for torticollis? Well, obviously the first warning sign is if you notice they have their head tilted to one side or tilted to the other side, uh, hold on, tilted to one side or rotated to the other side. Well, that's a sign for a torticollis. If they're having trouble feeding or nursing to one side, that's certainly another warning sign for a torticollis. If you notice that they have flatness on the back side of their head, Torticollis, um, children who have torticollis, 90% of the time they have this flattening in the back of their head on the side that they rotate their head to. So uh, if you notice that flattening, it's a reasonable chance that your child has a torticollis. If they avoid turning their head to one side for whatever reason, that's another ch chance that warning sign that your child has a torticollis. And if they prefer to use one hand over the other hand. So if their head is turned this way, then they're more likely to want to use that hand and not so much the other hand. So if your children, babies should not have a hand preference when they're first born, they should use their hands equally. So if you notice one hand is being used more than the other, that's certainly a warning sign for torticollis. So with torticollis, it is really important for all babies, in fact, that they, starting when they are born, that three times a day they have tummy time. Because now that children are on their back to sleep, in 1992, that was the rule that happened, that they said, every baby needs to sleep on their back now. Well, that decreased the chance of sudden infant death syndrome, but it increased the chances of torticollis. So babies need to be put on their stomach, uh, preferably on a, a firm surface. So on the floor with a blanket on top, it is the very best option as long as they can be supervised. But if you can't do that, use a pack and play or a play yard or something like that to be able to put a child on, the, on their tummy as much as they can tolerate it. You need to limit how long a baby is in containers. So what I mean by that is particularly a car seat. Those tend to increase the chances that a baby is going to have a torticollis. But you need to also minimize 
infant swings and bouncy seats and rockers. They are all, again, places that encourage because the child doesn't have good head control yet, so their head is more likely to fall off to the side and more likely to encourage uh, a, a torticollis. Okay, so what are the treatments for torticollis? Well, now there is advanced clinical guidelines for torticollis for treatment for physical therapists that physical therapists uh, all around the country can reference to know what are the current guidelines for treatment of children who have torticollis. The first thing is the aggressive repositioning that needs to be done. So uh, anything that you do during the day where the child is looking one way preferentially you wanna work on having them do the same thing the opposite direction. So that would be feeding or the changing table or um, when they're in, in the car seat of making sure the toys are on one side, when they're on their stomach to make sure the toys are on the opposite side of the way that they prefer to look. Um, the next thing that you do is you are taught, the parents are taught stretching and how to stretch the neck um, opposite their tilt and opposite their rotation. Um, and the last thing, well, there are two more things. Uh, after you get more range, you've got to learn to use your muscles in the new range that you uh, have acquired. So the next piece is strengthening, strengthening in the new range, those muscles that have been lengthened. And the last thing is just education of the parents how to do what they need to do and to be aware of the proper positioning and being aware that these children are more likely to be asymmetrical in their development because where the head goes, it affects the rest of your body. So it affects their hand use, it affects their balance reactions, how short or long the side of their trunk is. So it's important that the parents are aware of these issues so those things can be addressed if they show up. There are three basic types of torticollis. The first one is just postural. 20% of the children fall into this category. In this case, the child simply has a preference in the direction that they turn their head, but they don't have any muscular tightness whatsoever. These are children that uh, have just developed a habit, but the habit hasn't translated into a tighter muscle yet. That's 20% of the cases. The next one is muscular. And these are children, 30% of the cases, that they have developed tightness in that sternocleidomastoid muscle, this one right here, or this one right here. Um, and they actually do have limitations in the passive range of how far their head and neck can tilt or rotate. In normal development, a child should be able to passively, you should be able to help them take their ear all the way over uh, to the shoulder, I can't do it, because as you get older, you're, you get tighter, but an infant should be able to take this ear and put it on the shoulder. And in normal development, a baby should be able to rotate their head, and they should be able to turn it not just to their shoulder, you see how I cheated? Not just to your shoulder, which I can't quite get to, but they can get past their shoulder a little bit. And they should be able to do that on both sides. Okay, the third category is the ones that have a mass in the muscle right here. So they have a fibrous band or a mass in this muscle right here. So it can occur with about two to three weeks of age. 50% of children, if they're going to have this, have it by two months of age, and it can occur as late as three months of age. It can grow for about two months until it reaches to the size of an almond and it usually starts to disappear slowly over time, usually gone by the time they're eight months of age. Okay, so your next question is, oh my gosh, what causes this? Well, in the case of that mass that a child may have, that, like I say, appears typically in the first few weeks after birth, and that's due to a birth trauma uh, at, at the time of birth or shortly after birth. It's often caused by the use of forceps or a vacuum suction. It can be caused by just compression in the birth canal so that, that there's pressure and that, that uh, muscle does not get as much oxygen as it needs to get, and so it, it got damaged. Uh, it can also be caused by intrauterine malposition. So the baby is in a poor position. Uh, kids who are breech are more likely to have it. Um, and again, the kids who get stuck in one position and stay there too long, um, that, that could cause it. Um, another cause is GERD, gastroesophageal reflux. Those children have the effective torticollis often that can be with or without a hiatal hernia. 
And those children, uh, due to pain, can arch and r rotate their head off to one side because it's more comfortable for them due to the pain caused to the reflux. Uh, it can be positional, as we said as well. It can also be caused by early closure of the fontanelles. So the fontanelles are the soft spots in your brain your, uh, when, uh, and your skull. Um, when a baby is born, they have uh, soft spots where the plates of their skull have not grown together well. And when those close up early, it can be a cause of, of torticollis as well. Another cause is it can be caused by vision problems. So starting at six months or later, not before. So if the child has torticollis before six months, this is not the cause. But if it starts around six months, there's a muscle called the superior oblique, and it helps the eye turn down and out. And when children have a paralysis of that muscle, it can cause a torticollis when they're upright. But when they're laying on their back, their head is in neutral. So this is one of the ways you can rule out this difficulty is you can see if there's a difference in their head position, relatively speaking, when they're sit upright, standing or sitting, versus laying down. These children have trouble with tracking and uh, following an object close in toward the center. The next one is uh, orthopedic issues. So if there are anomalies in the spine or in the ribs, that those things can help cause, can cause a torticollis as well. Another cause of torticollis is benign paroxysmal torticollis. And this type of, of, of torticollis is one in which the head tilt can change from one side to the other over time. Now, sometimes you see this when a child is, a baby is having migraines. It can also be the side effect of medications like Reglan. Even if the mother is taking Reglan, it is a side effect of torticollis for that medication, and the mom, if the child is bre if the mother is breastfeeding, may pass that medication on to the child. Um, so that's another one to look for, and I have seen over time that sometimes kids' head tilt will change from one side to the other, and that would be called that benign proxismal torticollis. And the last one is just idiopathic, and that's a big word that means we don't know why they're doing it. And so um, that means it's important to look at all these factors because if, for example, the torticollis is being caused by gastroesophageal reflux, it's not gonna get any better until you fix that. Or if the child is having migraines, the torticollis is not gonna get any better until you fix it. So it's important to rule out all these other causes of torticollis to make sure that you do the right thing to help your baby get better with torticollis. The most important thing for you to think about if your child has or suspect your child has a torticollis is it's important to get to physical therapy as soon as possible because the research indicates that the sooner you get treatment, the better the child does. For example, if a child is less than one month old when they start seeing physical therapy, then 99% of the time you have a successful outcome. That means that there is the tilt and the rotation have completely resolved and the duration of the treatment is only a month and a half in most cases on average. If the baby comes in from one to three months, the success rate is 89% and the duration of treatment tends to be almost six months. If a child comes in from three to six months of age, then the success rate of treatment is 62% and often these children average are in therapy seven, 7.2 months. And if a child doesn't come to physical therapy for a torticollis from, until they're six to 12 months old, the success rate of complete resolution of their head tilt and rotation component of their neck is 19%. And those children are in therapy almost nine months. And another important thing to do is if you go to physical therapy and you have no significant change in the outcome of your child's range of motion or movement patterns within six to eight weeks, then if there's no improvement, then you need to refer, refer back to the doctor to make sure we're not missing one of the other risk factors. These are all basic information about torticollis. If I would encourage you, if you have concerns about torticollis, to go to your doctor and to start physical therapy as soon as possible to help improve the outcome for your child. I hope this is helpful and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. If you liked this video and would like to be notified by email when the next video comes out, click the subscribe button here 
and click the golden bell icon and ensure notifications are enabled on your account.